Morning, brother, and I want to continue uh, bringing our minds to bear or bring our minds to focus on uh, the work that God has begun in us. I want to think about that this morning. Um, it's a work of faith. Uh, it's by faith. It's through faith in Christ Jesus. It's a work that can't be done otherwise. It's a work that can't be done outside of faith in God. Then God is actually heading up the work. And we're just, we're participants and co-laborers in this work. So I want to think on that this morning just a little bit. Paul told the Philippians, he which hath begun a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's a good work, Paul said. One that God will bring to completion as God is doing it. The work of God in us, it begins with Christ. And the work originates in him, you see. So there's no work of God unless Christ is involved. As, uh, to be our thinking. Before Christ... Uh, the work was all in the preparation of his coming. Now that uh, Christ has come, uh, this work will continue, but it will be focused and it will be centered on the accomplishments of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 10.10, 10, it says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now, by the which will we are sanctified. Now, this which will here, this is the will this will, this which will, this is the will of God. He's speaking about the, uh, I come to do thy will, O God, uh, part. This is why Jesus came, to do the will of the Father. Uh, because it was, a, the, it was the will of the Father, like we spoke about this morning, it's all about uh, the will of the Father. And, you know, Jesus, uh, he volunteered for this. In and in a, in a way, you can see it as Jesus a volunteer and agreed to do this. I come to do thy will, O Father. Because, you see, Jesus was the only one who could, could do what the Father needed to be done. There was no other man qualified to do this. There was no other man. God himself said he looked and he could find no other man that could do this. The situation, as we talked about Wednesday night, the situation of the world was just utterly hopeless. Yeah. Uh, and we were with, actually we were without God and without Christ in the world. And uh, it's, it, it's, it, this is the view from heaven. This is the way uh, heaven sees. There's only two classes of men in heaven. It's only those who've been uh, in God, those who are in God, and, and those who are outside of God. And one, one uh, group of men, they have hope. The other men do not have hope. And so uh, that's the way heaven sees it. Before Christ came into the world, though, the point is in, this, in Scripture is that we were not sanctified. And, of course, it was God's will that his people be sanctified before him. It doesn't depend on the sanctification of uh, the will of God and his sanctification, his desire for sanctification. It doesn't depend on wants of men, what men desire, because uh, we thoroughly discussed this morning, we didn't know any of our situation. Uh, it says in Colossians 3.10, And have put on the new man, Paul says, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Paul says, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Mm -hmm. Now, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Now, what you want to do, put on the new man. When we come to God, we don't come to just the way we are. Uh, we don't come to God in the old man with his deeds. Before we could come to God, we had to come to Christ first. We all know this. So our approach to God could not come but only through Jesus Christ. We couldn't approach God any other way. Uh, the reason I make a point of this is because it's being, you know, emphasized that we come to God just the way you are. But really, that's not the truth. We need to not say it that way. Um, we, you've got to see Jesus first. You can't come without him. Uh, we can't come to God unless we put on that new man, see? That just the new man that God receives. And we can only get that through Jesus Christ. And and. He is the new man. He is created after the image of the one who created him, That's new man. Um, we got to come to Jesus first. If any man be in Christ Jesus, Paul said, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. Now, to sanctify men and to reconcile them to God, it was for this reason that Jesus came. This is the will of God, see. Uh, it was, it was a, he came for him to sanctify. Paul prayed for the uh, Thessalonians uh, in the first letter, 523. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and completely. Uh -huh. uh, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and your soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord. Paul, paid, Paul prays that in every regard, uh -huh. through and through, 
the, the saints at Thessalonica would be sanctified by Christ Jesus, all of them. Would this be so? This is the same thinking of Paul in Galatians three ten, being renewed, and there's this continual process of being sanctified. And you can you you, you see the essence of it in that verse. This is a, uh, it's a renewal that uh, it describes our position. Being renewed describes our position in Jesus Christ. Right. See, we are renewed in Him, and I, this is our status before God. We re, we are renewed. And it's the work of the Spirit within us, the continual work of the Spirit within us, that we are renewed. Uh, it's, a, it's a transformation that's taking place in men, that we are being, we are being prepared uh, for glory. When we are being, uh, we're being changed from one stage to another and, and, uh, after we uh, see him. This is the uh, renewed he's talking about. Paul tells the Romans, he says, Be not conformed to this world. In view of the world to come, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's another a way of say, uh, saying renewed. In Christ Jesus, no one should ever get up in the morning and wonder or try to decide what they're going to put on. You see, not the saints. Because uh, you've already put off the old man with his deeds. That's already, and you, you've already put, you put on the new man. See, that's already been done. The new man in Christ Jesus is growing and he's maturing creature. He is constantly advancing. He's constantly increasing in knowledge. And with emphasis on knowledge, this is not just any knowledge, of course, you understand. That is a, uh, it's a knowledge of the one from whom we receive life from, this new, this new man, to be renewed. Now, this is the manner of the spirit and the manner of the kingdom. And it's the manner, we see it's the manner of God and the saints to be renewed, growing in our awareness of God, uh, sensitivity to Him and our understanding of the ways of God, uh, regardless of how fast and how slow. Growth implies uh, a, a movement and change upward in, in the kingdom. And, and in the kingdom of Christ, uh, this is desirable for us. We desire these things. Um, and for one offering, He had perfected forever, forever them that are sanctified. That's a powerful verse, and it means just what it says. Uh, regardless of what other people, commentaries may say about this, all those who have come to Christ, they haven't been partially cleansed, and they haven't been partially uh, made perfect. But rather, the new man is growing, and he's maturing, uh, not to perfection, but he is growing and maturing in perfection. He's already been made perfect. We're growing in that status. Uh, and, it, and, of course, the only thing that inhibits us is this body that we have. And so one day when the Lord comes and we're fully redeemed, we'll drop this body and then this perfection will be completed in, in us. The new creature born of Christ, he's sinless and he's perfect after the image, after the image of the one who created him. So you, you see that how it, if we're made after the image of Christ, we couldn't be otherwise. Um, this renewed does not mean that God is restoring us to, our, to the way we were before, uh, to the to status of men was before the fall. This is not the kind of renewed he's talking about. But this is renewed as a language that describes the progress of growth and the maturing and the growing up of the saints in Christ Jesus. It's a, it's a contain, uh, continual change upwards in the Lord. Uh, we can see the opposite of this in the flesh. Now, the Spirit is forever changing upward to Christ, and the flesh is ever decaying and declining and becoming more corrupt. We see it generally in the world, and we see it in the flesh about us. So we see the opposite uh, that's taking place. The saints are ever being changed from one stage of glory to the next. Mm -hmm. Now, this morning, you've come here because you desire spiritual renewing. You desire to be increased and added to, and I'm going to say you will be. Just by your very desire and your inclination, God will add to you this morning. He'll add to me. And we have come in the fellowship of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We haven't come to any other thing to expect our increase and, and growth. We come to Jesus, and that's who we'll talk about today. And he will, he will add to us uh, the Spirit. He ministers among us. And he's working to this end. See, the Spirit, he will teach us how God thinks. And the Spirit 
He will, he will teach us how to view things as God views them. And see, so we'll, we'll be ever perfected in this manner. We'll ever be seeing things more clearly as God sees him. And that's the, that's the growth that uh, we desire. Uh, we'll become more familiar with God's purpose. And, and we'll see it more completely and more fully. It's a, a big purpose. And we, <laughs> we're increasing in our understanding of this very massive work that God is doing. Uh, this is being renewed in the inner man that Paul is talking about. Only the Spirit of God can renew us. And it, is, it will only happen, you know, in times like these. Mostly in times like these when we're gathered together and, and, and the salvation can be opened up and expounded to us in times. And when we, you know, when we uh, focus on the accomplishments of Jesus Christ. For the scriptures say that Christ came to do the will of the Father. And so that as we focus on Jesus, you see, and we open up his accomplishments and the things he has done, then we'll be more inclined uh, in our understanding about the will of God. And so we understand that uh, blessed is a man who, who desires uh, the will of God. So this morning, you know, let this be your inclination. Let this be your, your, your thinking that you... And, and, and so when I say that, that's where well, you want to engage yourself and, you know, to uh, apply yourself to this work that the Spirit will do today as he does every Lord's Day. Mm -hmm. And I know you're not unlike myself that you actually anticipate the times yeah. when the saints gather. You know, you'll Saturday say, hey, tomorrow's meeting day. Tomorrow's first day of the week, you know. So, they, you know, we've had three meetings this week, you know, Wednesday, Friday, and then we get to go tomorrow again. And so then, because we know that we're going to see something that's going to cheer us on and it's going to be joy. So anyway, I'll, I'll open, uh, call you up to that this morning. Uh, we'll have a short, uh, I'll just, I'll have a prayer and then we'll turn it right back over to uh, Sister Annie.